Vulnerability is not weakness. It's our most accurate measure of courage. Brene Brown. Welcome, and I'm so glad that you're here. Here we talk about personal development, relationships, and mental health, just to name a few. My name is Carmen, a registered counsellor who is passionate about coming alongside people. This podcast is designed to create a discussion and bring awareness with each episode encouraging, equipping, and empowering you to live your best life. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode. How have you been? It's been a month since we last connected and I have been busy with my head in some books for my studies and I have learnt so much and I can't wait to start to share all this new knowledge with you. So what's new on your end? Usually it's the obvious events or changes that capture our attention and we can easily miss the moments and you might have heard me talk about this before but we experience newness all the time and it can be in our thinking or in the way that we turn up and doing these wonderful things for our well-being. It's important to acknowledge this because it helps us become aware of progress and it can build confidence and highlight our capacity and our capabilities. So if you rush through your day, and I can relate, I need to be aware of this and mindful, why not after this episode, grab a cuppa and think of how far you've come and what you've achieved and even write them down because sometimes we undervalue ourselves. So in this week's episode, we unpack vulnerability. With vulnerability comes uncertainty. It's risky as we are emotionally exposed, positioned to be seen for who we are. Vulnerability is the key in healthy functioning relationships as it can create an atmosphere for intimacy and togetherness. There are two sides to vulnerability. The first side is when we choose to be vulnerable. And the second, when we are vulnerable. So an example of choosing to be vulnerable is when we are in an environment of trust and we share our experiences or our stories to deepen the connection with another or empower others. On the other hand, an example of when we are vulnerable is when A wound is still fresh and sharing our vulnerabilities with the wrong people can make matters worse. I wonder if it's fair to say we all have vulnerabilities, we all have stories, we've all been hurt. Being aware of these vulnerabilities can help us to create the appropriate boundaries that enable us to choose what we share and what we conceal. Have you ever shared something and then asked yourself later, why did I share that? Perhaps you were feeling vulnerable rather than choosing to be vulnerable. I have another one for you. Have you ever had someone keep pressing and asking questions and you caved in, even though you weren't ready to share or simply didn't want to, but did anyway? Oh, and you know that feeling that you get in your gut, how often do we go against our intuition and then realise the hunch was calling for our attention that something wasn't quite right and we downplayed it. So this episode is to create a discussion and get a sense of vulnerability and how to use it for us rather than against us. So when it comes to vulnerability, How do we know when it's okay to be vulnerable? Perhaps you are the best person to determine that for yourself and what you feel comfortable with. As food for thought, picture a house. You have doors, windows, gates and the like that create boundaries. This can be the same with how and with who we communicate our vulnerabilities with. 
there are five levels to communication and you may have heard me unpack these in another episode but just in case you haven't or if you're new to the podcast I will go over these levels and hey it's always a good refresher. So level one is our hallway talk also known as cliche. It's non-sharing and can be with anyone and no real trust is needed like talking about the weather. Level two Facts. It's the sharing of what we know. This can be shared with many, and little trust is required. It's about something else rather than oneself. Level three. Opinions and sharing what we think, and requires some trust as the communication risk starts to increase from this point onwards. However, emotions are not expressed. Level four, emotions and sharing how we feel. At this point, trust levels need to be greater and fewer people are involved. This is where vulnerability and intimacy begin. And level five, vulnerability and the sharing of who we are. This requires complete transparency. This side of ourselves is reserved for those we trust. Having boundaries can help us choose what we share and how we share it. So on a finishing note, being vulnerable needs to be on our terms. So why not have a think about what vulnerability means to you and what it looks like in how you do relationships, how you empower others and how you protect yourself when you're feeling vulnerable. If you're going through a hard time, I encourage you to seek support from those you trust. So as always, it's a pleasure coming alongside you. So don't forget if you have any topics that you would like me to cover, please get in touch because if you're asking a question or if there's a topic on your mind, I'm sure it will benefit someone else. So until next time, you take care. Bye for now. So that's it for today's episode. As always, I'm grateful for the opportunity to come alongside you. If you know someone who might benefit from hearing this episode, why not share it with them? Don't want to miss an episode? You can subscribe to the podcast. And if you are listening via Apple Podcast, I would be most grateful if you would leave a review. For more content, head over to carmendebono.com.au. And I look forward to coming alongside you again on the first Wednesday of the month.